Hello, welcome. Today, I'm going to take you on a journey, a mystery tour of the power bank. In this case, one of the new Anchor Solix power banks. These are big power banks with big power numbers and big energy storage, but claim reasonable density. Did they sacrifice efficiency for features? Is it worth it over other offerings? Testing and data will be presented as well as an overview of the actual product itself. It's going to be a rechargeable one, so stay tuned. I expect the efficiency to get better with this larger size power bank, but you never know these days. The USB technology has seemed to move the other way for power adapters, so it's interesting to see how this does overall. There's affiliate links which earn me a couple percent but cost you nothing in the description, as well as links for more information. Many thanks to my patrons and channel supporters. The detailed data is on Patreon, and it will make it to the website eventually. Okay, so this is really just a power bank, a big one. It has a lot of features though. There are some oddities for sure, and this leads to some confusion on operating it. The ports are fairly well labeled though, so hopefully this helps people identify what can do what. And looking at the bottom of the device, it has a lot of marks and information. This does have a safety listing, which is nice to see on larger power banks especially. The text talks about some modes of operation and the power limits on some of the ports. A lot to look at really. It comes with a USB-C cable. It's rubbish, just throw it out. The older Anchor device came with a cable that's less than half the resistance of this one. It heats up like a space heater when you charge with it. No idea why they even bothered including this e-waste in the box. It technically functions, but throw 5% of your efficiency away with this cable. When you first go to power this device up, they give you a little info card. It looks like when they ship these, they are in some kind of a low power mode, so it needs to be booted up essentially by a power adapter of at least a certain capacity. I mean, where am I gonna find a power adapter that can do this? So on first power up, it starts charging and pretty much takes right off to full power, 140 watt charging, nice. There is no user manual included, just a QR code and lots of warnings about what not to do with it. Eat it. Somewhere I'm sure it says it's not a food product. In reviews, this was a big complaint. I didn't care too much as the device was pretty intuitive to use. The info card to get started is included. I found no reason to use the app for this device, which is very welcome. Also, the tablet I bought specifically to use sketchy apps like this already broke and got returned. So what is energy and what do the numbers mean? The battery capacity is rated a few different ways. One way is the milliamp hours or amp hours, which is an adjusted value for one cell voltage of the battery pack. This doesn't mean much of anything. 90,000 milliamp hours in this case, this times the battery voltage of 3.2 volts for lithium iron phosphate cells gives you 288 watt hours. Now this is useful. This is the energy the device is storing. Now you can always use this number to calculate the runtime for the power bank. 288 watt hours divided by how much power you need leaves you with hours. Now what's nice is this device does the math for you and gives you the result with losses on the display. And it's accurate. Two of the USB ports are for charging. These two are the only high power ports as well. So 145 watts maximum on each port. There is a 100 watt port in this group as well, but output only. The 140 and 100 watt ports will operate as two ports without renegotiation. When you add a third port or the other devices like the DC port, then you trip a lower power level. It's fairly fluid though and feels smarter than the average power bank. It's pretty well handled here. It can charge and discharge at the same time, even at 140 watts on each port. With the light on, two USB-A devices, and the DC port turned on. So yeah, it's got capability. The USB modes will drop if you use them all as outputs. So, is it a UPS or uninterruptible power supply? No, it is not a UPS. It will not source power from the power adapter directly to the output. So all of the energy through the device has to go into the battery, then back out of the battery. So if you keep this plugged in all the time, it will continuously be charging and discharging the battery. The power will stay on, but it's not a good idea and it's not what this is made for. Does it work with 240 watt chargers? Of course it does. It looks like it mostly hovers around 235 watts of input power. The display on this is fairly accurate as well, which is nice to see. The percentage of charge and discharge is right on. The time remaining was spot on. The display overall actually is quite good. It's bright, gives me just enough information, but not too much. Huh, good balance. Okay, it has all these features, but is it any good? Well, it's near the top for power banks. It's not the best by any means, but it's not bad. 
the energy in is about 330 watt hours. If you charge faster, it gets a little less efficient. Same goes for discharging. At 100 watts out, which is probably not an unrealistic continuous load for a couple devices plugged in, this gains almost an extra whole phone charge. So it can be even better if you slow charge things, but not too slow. It takes power to keep everything awake. So just as an example, the built-in display shows the hours remaining, and by turning on the light, it settles to a certain value. Then I add in a few very low power USB-A lights, and you see the number drop a little. Just switching on the DC carport, and it drops a little more. So at 10 watts out, you're going to go for a while, but it's not going to be as efficient. When charging the power bank up with the Anker 240 watt power brick, one of my top choices for power adapters, it didn't break a sweat keeping up with the power bank requirements. It fully charged in about two and a half hours and it pretty much uses 140 watts the entire time. Basically pegs the adapter right up until 99% when it tapers back to 50 watts and then stops fully at 100% charged. If still plugged in, it keeps the power adapter active, so it uses about one watt doing nothing in this state. So make sure you unplug it when it's done charging. As we already saw, it works fine with two adapters, but that extra speed, about an hour less of charge time, does cost you some efficiency. I'd probably stick with lower charging speed. Since when is 140 watts considered lower speed? The numbers have gone bonkers with this one. Anyway, overall, a very reasonable result. The power bank, with the air ventilation slots along the side means it isn't waterproof, but that also means it has absolutely no thermal issues whatsoever. The vents provide plenty of cooling to keep the device running continuously at its full power level and nothing on the outside got hot at all. Lukewarm, sure, but that's fully expected. During both the charging and discharging test at 140 watts, it was good. I checked at the higher power levels as well and it wasn't significantly any different. So 300 watts in or out, this power bank can do it. In comparing this with a few other power bank options, it has some wins for sure. It looks like compared with the only other device with the same battery style I've tested, it has a clear win. It is a little less efficient than the Anker 250 watt power bank, but this is a pretty small margin. Overall performance means it basically kept up with the smaller power bank. But in reality, I think it wins because it can do higher power levels that it claims all the time not for 15 minutes. The battery technology used in this power bank is lithium iron phosphate. These batteries are known for being more stable over the long term, but also more safe versus a regular lithium ion cell. The main disadvantage is that they are less energy dense. So overall, I don't expect to see any real wins here, and as expected, it doesn't. It does, however, beat the pants off the EcoFlow, but that did have an AC inverter in it as well as a built-in AC charger. But do you need to take those parts with you? Probably not, so save a little weight with this one. Okay, let's talk about value. This is actually quite good for value. It really is at a price point that makes sense among the other power banks. It's three to four times the capacity that even their own company is offering and it costs the same amount. It delivers more power, more energy, and it's got a pretty sizable value proposition even over cheaper power banks. Very interesting. I wasn't expecting this to be the value champion. Okay, it's another power bank. It's upper average in terms of general performance, which is better than par for the course for newer USB technology. It has the longer lasting batteries in terms of time, and the energy available is a lot. It can't fly on a plane though, so don't try and bring this through an airport. The reviews really hate the way they include the instructions, tons of paper, but nothing useful. The cable that comes with it is e-waste. It should come with nothing. The positives. It can charge with two USB-C bricks. Buy them all. Is that a positive? It doesn't support newer USB technology though, so the framework 180 watt adapter is wasted on this device. Actually, it gets real confused by that device and forces only a low power mode. Wait, positives. Um, it's not waterproof, and it has ventilation holes on the side. You can see the battery and electronics. If you leave it outside and it condenses on the case or inside, it's going to be wet and break. I really doubt they conformally coded the circuit boards. It's not doubt. I checked. They didn't. Man, I'm really not getting the positive aspect, am I? Okay, got it. It doesn't overheat. Also, since it does come apart so easily, maybe it's repairable. Phew. Yeah, got some positives. It has a pop-up light that's very usable. The diffuser makes it not too harsh to look at either. The port selection and options are more than what others are offering. 
It can charge and discharge at the same time and power lots of devices without renegotiating the USB ports for the most part. It is not a UPS, so the circuit board does not pass power through. Everything goes to the battery or comes out of the battery. The 140 watt mode will drop if you use a bunch of the accessories with the 300 watt power limit, so something has to give. But it's really good here. There are claims of not working with low power devices. I tried to recreate this and I didn't have any problems. It does require a USB-C adapter with PD to charge. A USB-A adapter will not charge it. It's like four moderately sized power banks glued together. It's the same efficiency wise and it's got a longer lasting battery. I will probably end up using this around the house. If it comes down to value for portable power, this wins. Are you going to get one of these? Thanks for watching. Check the description. Goodbye.